Our first case tells a story. It's one of our own. One of our own docs who came home from Florida to find his screening PSA, which he had obtained at a health fair, was in the 40s. He then underwent an MR examination and a visit to his physician. The MR examination using the cardiac coil on a T2 water weighted and a T1 weighted MRI shows one of the typical findings of prostate cancer, namely an ill-defined area of low signal on the T2 weighted image that looks a little bit like the erasure sign that we see in osteomyelitis, the so-called charcoal ill-defined hypointense sign in the right portion of the gland as opposed to the heterogeneous lumpy bumpy some dark some bright areas of the left portion of the gland which is normal the right portion of the gland is where the tumor sits I'd like to share with you some basic facts now before we plunge into cases like this and others prostate cancer affects about 250,000 Americans a year and it kills somewhere between 25,000 and 3 it kills somewhere between 25,000 and 30,000 Americans per year there are two ways that we screen for prostate cancer one is with the serum PSA which has become controversial and the other one is with a digital rectal examination the United States preventative task force has suggested that PSA shouldn't be used in American men at all whereas the American Urologic Association in 2013 suggested that only symptomatic men should be screened with a PSA up to age 54 but after age 54 from 55 on then serum PSA can be used as a screening evaluator and we're going to see how MRI fits in into the evaluation of these two groups especially the over 55 year old group that has an elevated PSA but let's come back to our case let's look at the prostate as a globe and within that globe we have several key anatomic areas which I'd like to share with you right now so let's do that in a very simple mode I'm going to use my drawing tool and I'm going to make the prostate into a globe this is an axial view of the prostate and on either side of that globe we've got the neurovascular bundle which consists of nerves and vessels I've got a couple vessels in there and I'll make the nerves pink and they're located near the base or upper portion or proximal portion of the bladder at about the seven o'clock and on the other side the five o'clock position so let's put them in there and we've got our neurovascular bundle the outer boundary of the prostate is known as the anatomic capsule around that anatomic capsule we've got a vascular plexus which is known as the periprostatic venous plexus and I've drawn it in here in, in green remember this is an axial projection within our axial view we have our urethra which I'll draw in yellow and then immediately surrounding our urethra which I'll draw in blue is the transitional zone which is part of the central region of the prostate around that transitional zone sits another area known as the central zone now this is a little bit confusing I'm going to make the central zone orange so the central zone orange and the transitional zone blue comprise the central portion of the prostate together so we have a central portion and then as you get older this gets a little bit bigger in fact it gets a lot bigger and then this outer area this black area which we haven't colored in is the peripheral area of the prostate which goes all the way around the prostate from top to bottom but gets thinner in various positions as we go from top to bottom which we'll see in a few moments now the peripheral zone contains about 75 percent of the glands of the prostate by by volume the transitional zone contains about 
5%, and the central zone contains about 20%. Now, as you age, the transitional zone will get bigger and bigger and press the central zone outward against the peripheral zone so that eventually, when you're 70 years old, the prostate may look something like this. You've got a big central region, which is comprised of mostly transitional zone tissue that presses the central zone area out against the peripheral zone, and the peripheral zone becomes thinner and thinner and thinner. Oh, but we're not done yet. Let's use our erasure, our eraser. Let's look at the prostate in the sagittal projection. And I'm going to use my same color just for consistency. And I'll make the bladder up at the top. Here's your bladder. And coming out of the bladder, we'll make this time in pink the urethra, which comes down and around. And around the urethra, as you would expect, you're going to have the transitional zone, which I've got here this time in purple instead of blue. And around our transitional zone, as part of the central region, we have the outer part of the central region, which is known as the central zone. And we said that these two zones, particularly the transitional zone, enlarges as you age. Note that there is quite a bit of peripheral zone tissue, and that that peripheral zone tissue, which I'll now color in in pink, actually I better make it a different color, maybe dark pink, goes all the way down low. I think I need a darker color here. Let's find, uh, let's use light blue again. And our peripheral zone goes all the way down, fairly low, and this low area is known as the prostate apex. Now, the upper portion of the prostate is known as the base. We have the anterior portion of the prostate to the viewer's left, the posterior portion of the prostate to the viewer's right. And there are several other key anatomic areas. For instance, in the front, we've got a bunch of fat, which is known as the prostatic space of rhesus. In the back, we have a fascial layer, which separates the prostate from the rectum, which is known as the dinal villiae fascia. We also have, although not seen in this projection, a periprostatic plexus, which you saw in the axial projection. There are also various sphincters, an internal and external sphincter, which we'll encounter and talk about a little bit later. One more area of note is the anterior fibrovascular stroma, or fibrous stroma. That fibrous stroma is found in the far anterior aspect of the gland. I'm going to draw it in blue. And when there is an anteroapical area of prostate cancer, which would occur perhaps right here, it'll grow right into this blue area, the fibrovascular stroma, or the fibrous stroma of the prostate gland. This is a very common occurrence and very difficult to evaluate and analyze with conventional transurethral ultrasound assessment and or biopsy. In fact, biopsies will frequently miss cancers that are down low or in continuity with the anterior inferior fibrovascular stroma. Let's turn our attention now to the coronal projection. So this time we'll make our globe coronally oriented drawn the globe in blue. Sorry about that. I should have used the same color. And then you'll see the urethra coming down the center of the globe. I'll make it green this time. And sometimes the urethra will be a little, little bit exaggerated at the utricular level. And then we see the seminal vesicles coming off the prostate base. I'll make those red this time. Here's one seminal vesicle. Here's the other seminal vesicle. And coursing around the seminal vesicles will be the ductus deferens. The seminal vesicles are usually bright on the water-weighted image, except as you get a bit older. Now, this upper portion of the prostate in this location is known as the base. The central third of the prostate in this location is known as the mid-prostate. And the lower portion is no, known as the apical portion of the prostate, with the deepest portion of the apex being down here. We also 
divide the prostate at the mid-level into what we call lateral and intermediate segments. The lateral segment in the outer half, the intermediate segment in the inner half. That's pretty much the only place where we make that division because that's where the prostate is widest. So we have base, apex, mid, mid-lateral, mid-intermediate. And these are going to get very unique names, as we'll see a little bit later on when we go to use our nomenclature for PIRADS 2.0. So that's our introduction to a patient with a prostate carcinoma in the right side of the gland and to prostate anatomy.